Hey everybody, uh, we're doing a short video tonight. I just wanted to post up my initial response or my initial feelings about using Logic on one of the new M1 Silicon computers. This is the Mac Mini. And in fact, you know, I had uh, the, the choice between the eight and the 16 gig um, version of for RAM. And I was interested in just getting the the least expensive version of this new computer, knowing that it's going to mature probably in a couple of years instead of, you know, going even a few hundred dollars more. I thought, you know what, let me just take this through its paces over the next year or two. And then, you know, when they start releasing the bigger computers with this, we'll, we'll be more familiar with it and, you know, get a different sense or, you know, get a feel for how it's working. And I got to tell you, there's been some huge bumpy parts of my initial day with this. It arrived this morning at 9 a.m. And I'm making this uh, at around 11 p.m. And it certainly wasn't easy, but nothing had to do with logic. It's like I had an external hard drive that didn't want to, you know, show up that had been working fine. It eventually did uh, show up. But um, it's just small things like that that were quirky about uh, Big Sur and the M1 chip. I think there's some some growing pains in the operating system. But for the most part, Logic has been working like a dream. I got to tell you, this is as smooth as I've ever seen this software working. And I pulled open a, a relatively old project from a long time ago. I don't have the audio recording right now. Partly because uh, the minute I start doing screen flow capture, I lose my actual latency times. And so I want to show you, you know, I've got this set to 32 for the buffer size with the full project. It's not a big, huge project. It's really medium to medium small. But, um, you know, I just plugged in the Steinberg UR22 Mark II didn't install any drivers and it's been working without any issues whatsoever. And I don't think I've ever gotten it to work smoothly with an IO buffer size of 32 samples uh, in the old versions. I, I think there was always like some clicks or pops or some other things happening. And I, you know, this song, which again is not a huge song. I've opened up even bigger ones, but this is the one I have open right now. You know, it's it's barely getting up to 25% when it's playing. And that's at the buffer size of 32, which it doesn't even seem to think that we're at a low buffer size. It's been playing amazing. Um, I want to go through just a couple of my favorite things having to do with the new setup. And obviously the performance of this is is one of them. Meaning that I can just push play and I can work on things and uh, things that sometimes would have a little delay or would, you know, sometimes take a second to update. Nothing like that happens. I mean, I'm just playing and I'm going to mute for one second while I push play so you don't hear it on my headphones. But I just push play and it's like, you know what? I'm going to make a new track and I'm going to load on a new microphone input and do all this stuff. And it just is so smooth and it doesn't even like pretend like it's playing. It's it's that's one of my favorite things, just how snappy it feels and how smooth all of that works. The other thing I'm really excited about, but it's not fully functional yet. Um, meaning that there are some manufacturers who have decided not to share their iPad or iPhone apps with this, but there are some that have. So for instance, I'm able to resurrect the Lemur app. This is the iPad app running natively here on my computer. Well, it may be through Rosetta, I'm sure, but it's running here on the computer without having to attach the iPad. And I can come through and set, for instance, the IAC driver in there as my MIDI. And this thing can now control things inside Logic. And so it's pretty cool. Some of the things that we have inside here have always been pretty amazing. 
and I've really liked them. So I think it's kind of fun to, for instance, have Pong as a MIDI controller type thing. And so, you know, this is that data generated by this thing is actually able to control diff different elements inside Logic. It is amazing. And so I think that having some of these apps, which we've had on the iPad or iPhone now here, without having to connect the actual other device is pretty cool. So I've downloaded just a couple of them to see what would work. Um, so I've got a couple of the effects. These do not show up in Logic to be used. They try, but they're not able to be used. Um, and then I'm going to be looking at some of the other MIDI ones. I don't, oh, Seaboard 5D instrument. That one's working. Um, I already showed you Lemur. We've got a couple of these other ones. Uh, and so, you know, I haven't even messed around with this one at all. Looks like this one doesn't even do anything unless it's loaded as an AU version 3. So it may not be able to do anything inside Logic. I haven't actually looked to see if it would show up, but it doesn't look like it. So it's not going to, that particular one won't do anything. The other ones, I'm hoping they're going to bridge the gap and make it so that we can actually load some of those effects into our projects. Um, but the MIDI control stuff, so the lemur and some of the other MIDI control type things do work and you can send the, the data back and forth. So that's pretty cool. One, the other example then would be uh, the Seaboard instrument. Now, this is weird a little bit because if I come into Logic, let's do a new external MIDI track and we pop this down. So for instance, we could load up and it'll see the Seaboard right here inside Logic. Pretty cool. It just sends it straight over. However, the weird thing to me is that in the Audio MIDI Studio, there's no instrument like that. So it's not showing up even inside the instrument or inside the uh, the MIDI studio part of the system, it's like a direct pathway between Logic and that app, and um, it's bypassing the system. So some definite things to get worked out there, but um, definitely some promise and uh, some interesting things happening. Now, the big elephant in the room is which other third-party things are gonna work with this, and how soon. Uh, my East-West libraries are still not certified, although they are opening and so far working. A um, little glitchy, I've noticed, but um, not, not completely out of the ballpark. And uh, Waves stuff now is working, and so I can use some of my Waves effects. Um, but as most of you know who've been watching my channel, I stick with a lot of the default stuff in Logic because I think it's just great, and I think it's great to not have to worry whether it's going to work or not. But anything I do with uh, Ambisonics or you know, 360 audio has to have some third-party things. So those, there's one other company from France that I'm waiting for to see if they're going to do anything to get that up and running. Otherwise, you know, obviously the benefits to this, if you use a lot of logic effects and in instruments, you're going to be up and running really quickly. And, um, you know, it's even with the 8 gig RAM version, which is several hundred dollars cheaper than the 16 gig one. I mean, I haven't hit anything above 75%, even with some of my bigger projects. And so I'm not, I'm not worried about this at all. I don't do anything that has, you know, a thousand tracks on it. And so I think that um, for the next year or two, I'm going to be, you know, sitting pretty with something that's really responsive and capable of doing anything. And um, if you're looking at getting into this, I don't think that the uh, the 8 versus 16 gigs of RAM in this new architecture is going to be a huge deal breaker. I mean, I've loaded in projects that are all virtual instruments, and um, it hasn't been sluggish, or you know, I haven't noticed anything that's an issue as long as your samples are all off of uh, quick hard drives. Um, I think everything's been going really smoothly, really shockingly smooth. 
And uh, I was expecting maybe to, you know, really feel like the eight gigs of RAM was a detriment, but in any practice here, I mean, everything is just so responsive. And um, I don't, I don't notice any difference compared to my previous Mac mini and even my previous MacBook Pro, um, I mean, this thing, it just blows all of that out of the water. So anyway, uh, starting to get a little long-winded, I just wanted to show this and talk about it. And we're going to do a few more videos over the next couple weeks looking at some really intense things here with the, uh, the M1. And um, hopefully we'll find some interesting things as we move forward.